All right, glad to see you all on this uh, Pronix webinar. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, what it means to be a digital leader in 2022. I uh, have with me uh, Kishore, the VP of uh, Digital Solutions there at Pronix. I have uh, Paul Daigle. Uh, he's uh, with Biz Advisory Board and the co-founder of MSP Tag. It's good to see both of you gentlemen today. And uh, let's, uh, let's have each of you talk a little bit about your roles in, in your uh, various companies. And then we'll get into some of these questions about uh, digital leadership. Sure. Sure. So Kishore, why don't you get, get us started there? What, what, do you, what do you do over there at Pronix? Yeah, so I'm the VP of uh, Digital Solutions. I mean, uh, apart from the title, so I, I basically partner with uh, CIOs and CTOs and, uh, you know, VPs of uh, various companies, various industries. So we essentially understand their, uh, you know, digital initiatives, you know, what they're actually planning on the IT strategy to make the company as a digital business. So a lot of companies that we work with, so they're trying to get away from the legacy uh, you know, way of doing business with, uh, you know, legacy software, legacy applications. So uh, they're trying to innovate themselves with the new uh, business practices. And uh, so along the way, they are basically, you know, acquiring all the digital tools, digital technologies, digital platforms that enable them to do uh, seamlessly uh, with, the, you know, self-service options from the customers, acquiring customers, and then be able to integrate partners, you know, seamlessly uh, and standing up applications in a you know rapid manner, uh, without you know custom developing from scratch, uh, and then enabling you know cloud services, uh, you know so that they can be able to host the applications on the public cloud, private cloud, hybrid. So we basically you know I partnered with them, uh, come up with a, you know a digital architecture, and then uh, you know uh, suggest and advise uh, provide you know advisory services on you know various solutions and options based on the, uh, their IT strategy, initiatives, the IT goals, and, and making sure that you know, uh, the business is digitally enabled. So that's what is our goal. And we offer a wide variety of solutions and services. So, but, but let's you know, dive into the topic, so. Perfect. Um, before we get over to, to Paul, I'd like to uh, welcome Deb Roy, Global Marketing Head of Pi Data Centers. It's good, good to soon. see you. Thanks. So thank you so much for having me. Hey, Kishore, good to see you, man. No, after good long. Right? Yeah. Uh, it's a pleasure, um, pleasure to be here, gentlemen. Uh, if you if you could, uh, Deb, just kind of give us a give us an overview of what you do for uh, for Pi Data Centers there. Uh, pleasure, pleasure, Jason. I'll do it. Uh, hi, Paul. Uh, seven. So, um, in fact, first of all, guys, well, thanks for having me on this panel. Right and. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have a great next, you know, 40, 45 minutes, you know, uh, catching up with each other. Um, now, so let me give you a quick overview. Uh, my name is Dave, uh, Dave Malia Deroy, uh, you know, and, and my friends call me Dave. So that's how I'll leave it short and sweet. And I represent uh, Pi Data Centers, which is um, India's first uh, greenfield and, uh, you know, uh, perhaps world's fourth largest uh, uptime institute, uh, TO4 certified data center and cloud provider, right? Uh, uh, so uh, I had the, um, as a chief revenue officer and uh, global marketing head um, of the company, I have this very enviable, uh, you know, uh, charter to manage business and branding together, right? So I think uh, that's something which you don't see and they generally don't talk to each other in, in organizations, but uh, to ensure that, to ensure that both these, you know, um, uh, both these uh, business units, right, or both these uh, domains come under one roof and, and work hand in hand. Right? And um, I think uh, we came into existence uh, seven years back, uh, to be 2014, right? Um, and since then, uh, I think, uh, and as all of you are aware, uh, the India has been at the thick of uh, the digital transformation and Know the whole renaissance that we see around uh, you know digitization and so on and so forth. I mean, like way too many things happening almost on hourly basis in India in terms of something you know uh, getting getting a uh, something getting uh, put on the racks to uh, to show showcase right. And I think we have uh, and cloud uh, is you know uh, cloud is has been uh, at the core of it right. Whether you talk about a SaaS or you talk about a, a plain Jane vanilla IS or so on and so forth. 
so uh, that makes us uh, in the thick of things. And uh, and last uh, two years, uh, you know, because of this whole pandemic situations across uh, across the globe, um, I think uh, this domain uh, has never been more sorted than where it is today. Right. So uh, starting from uh, you know enterprises uh, or businesses moving from in-house to uh, to a cloud or to a hosted data center infrastructure to um, this whole emphasis on data localization and then sovereignty, the GDPR uh, story that got kicked in, right? Uh, where data is kind of uh, getting into a reverse pollination, right? It's coming. Yeah. So I think we have been like, uh, you know, all hands square and uh, I mean, you know, back to the, to the nose of, of having all of these, uh, you know, magnum size of data kind of hitting our, our uh, IPs and coming in and hosted on us. Right? Uh, it has been very exciting, right? We have worked very, you know, hand in hand with, um, I mean, like, you know, with, with someone like uh, Kishore and, you know, as our partner and then our enterprise uh, you know, customers across board, even, even federal, even federal bodies, right? I mean, they've worked very closely with us uh, all through this transition process. And uh, we are still scratching the surface, if I have to say. Yeah, that's how it is. Uh, it's exciting days ahead. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Deb. Um, Paul, uh, talk to us for a moment about what you're doing with Biz Advisory Board. Yeah, well, uh, currently I'm the managing partner of Biz Advisory Board. Uh, we, uh, we help businesses uh, stand up, restructure, and turn around. Uh, you know, I used to own an MSP up to about 10 years ago, and I'm still recovering. Uh, you know, uh, today, today uh, you know, we're managing, uh, managing budgets of other over $140 million dollars. Uh, assets over 600 million, um, and you know, it's, you know, on the high tech side, we roll up uh, as a private equity strategy, rolled up 130 million dollars of MSPs, uh, a, a few little VARs, and, and some UCAS providers. And so, you know, we basically specialize in turnaround, restructure, and pivoting, scaling, growing businesses, and a lot of it has to do with the digital transformation. Um, and so, you know, I'm really excited about the, the conversation we're going to have today. Looking forward to it. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Paul. Well, let's, uh, let's jump right into our, our topic for today. Our topic for today is uh, the attributes of digital leaders in 2022. And uh, let's uh, try, to, uh, try to, what I'll do is I'll ask the same question to each of you and give you each a, a chance to to, to respond. So uh, let's start with Kishore, uh, since we haven't had him talk a lot yet. Um, Kishore, what does it mean uh, to be a digital leader? Uh, I mean, in, in uh, our experience with the different businesses across multiple industries, uh, so if, if you really want to grow your business, so you must take certain steps towards, you know, becoming a digital leader, right? So digital leaders are really, you know, outperforming the competition and they're leading the industries we have seen in the pandemic, you know, a lot of companies, especially the digital uh, innovative companies, they, they really, you know, uh, compete with the uh, uh, big companies and they really outperform, right? So, and they increase the revenues and operations. So as, as a digital leader, I mean, uh, what we have seen uh, happening outside because we work with a number of uh, chief digital officers, CIOs, and CTOs and the VP of uh, you know transformation programs, you know business transformation, digital transformation, and overall you know automation. So it's not about you know digitalizing everything. So I don't call uh, that as a digital leader. So a, a digital leader is you know someone who can hop into new technology trends, so they can take risk and you know uh, trying up a new way of doing business using new technology, you know cutting edge, you know uh, you know bleeding edge of uh, technologies. Uh, so that's that's the number one, right? So basically the innovation, right? So innovative mindset. And the second thing is putting the technology first, right? So any uh, business process that they have within the industry, for example, healthcare, uh, so it could be, you know, dealing with a, a payer or a provider or a, you know, a claims admin or, uh, you know, uh, providing, uh, you know, patient care uh, and then, you know, the scheduling and the overall, you know, patient journey and the patient experience and the overall results, right? So we have seen, because this is a practical use case for all of us. So the companies who actually use the technology as the first vehicle, 
the advanced technology to be in front of the provider and the patient and the logistics in between. So they are the ones that are able to, uh, you know, deliver the tests, right? The, the, the COVID tests or the, or the vaccination or the, the medication uh, or the, you know, the ancillaries like oxygen cylinders and all. So they are the yeah. ones that actually came up forward. So I would say, uh, uh, you know, putting technology first is uh, another attribute. So the, the other characteristics basically being more, uh, you know, purpose driven and strategic uh, in terms of the company goals. So they have to take certain business initiatives in a very, you know, a strategic manner. So that's another characteristic, uh, you know, attitude, or, I mean, I would say attributes of the technology leader. And also they should be able to measure the results, not only just applying technology and being innovative, but they should be able to measure the results and it should be better than what they were practicing earlier in terms of uh, traditional business process. So converting the traditional business process into more of a digital uh, you know, business process is the main key element uh, that we have observed. And a lot of CA, CIOs and CTOs and CDOs and the senior IT and business leadership who actually took transformation as their main objective across the organization, dealing with employees, dealing with the partners. So uh, I would say those are some of the you know attributes that you know uh, will be accounted for uh, more success for the you know uh, being a digital business. Perfect, thank you. Um, for those of you that are, are listening, the uh, the white paper that Pronix has put together uh, on this topic. Uh, you'll find the link for that. You see, you see it on your screen there, but you'll find the link for that uh, there in the chat. Uh, let's move over, please, to, to Paul with the same question. What does it mean to be a digital leader? Well, I, I look at it in five different segments. Uh, I, I look at it as, you know, you got to be a digital leader in, in, in getting the word out. Uh, mm -hmm. Number one. The second thing is 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 going digital is going to help you in your operations in your business operations, uh, the process, and then also measuring KPIs, as as um, as as what as uh, Kishore was alluding to. Uh, once you get your operations going, then you can scale. Now you can bring in additional staff, additional people, and they know what to do because you have the processes in place and they're all digital and everybody's going through the same thing and making sure that the customers and everybody else is following the same process so everybody understands. You know, when you lose the customer, it's a lot about, a lot about not setting the proper expectations up front. Correct. You know, whether it's, it, whether it's doing a data center upgrade or whether it's just doing, you know, we're going to be meeting, what are we going to talk about? What's, what's our agenda? Uh, the third thing is it's going to help you scale. It's going to, it's going to, the fourth thing is, is growth. And then the fifth thing, eventually everybody's going to want to exit. And the, 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 the better hand you have on digital uh, transformation and being a digital leader, you're building, not, you're building something that's sustainable the way beyond you. And it's very, very valuable to others because you're doing stuff and you're doing more with less people resources, a lot more automation, and like uh, what Deb was talking about and everything else earlier too. So those are my five steps, uh, uh, getting the word out, operations, scale, growth, and successful exit. All right, thank you, Paul. Deep, uh, same question to you. Uh, what does it mean to be a digital leader? Okay, uh, thanks, Jason. I think, uh, you know, I, I, I got the best of both Kishore and what Paul said. So. I think um, I, I'm the, that, that's the late movers advantage, right? So, uh, okay. So uh, let me let me just put it into a, a little different perspective, right? So uh, uh, just allow me a minute. Just some. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so uh, let me uh, kind of, now be, being a business uh, person, professional myself, let me uh, walk uh, from the, uh, the market to the uh, boardroom. Uh, let's look at uh, how, the, how the industry is structured today. When you go to an enterprise, the traditional way is you see a CIO, the chief information officer. You see a CEO, chief technology officer, very distinctively designed roles. Now you see another third uh, perspective is a CDO. 
chief digital officer now when you put that cdo and amalgamate into a cio and cto that precisely actually answers your question it becomes chief technology digital officer and chief information tech uh, digital officer which means somebody who is digitally equipped to use technology and information to the best effect right and having technology having everything pivot around technology right so as a as a as a digital leader uh you should be able to uh you know you should be able to do a a predictive analysis setting what it is today visible what is what is going to be the after tomorrow right with with technology uh, at the core right so whether it is uh, like like kishore was uh, uh, touching upon whether it is processes or it is uh, you know de- operations delivery businesses right or strategy anything around that for everything technology stands at the core and everything pivots around that and when you do that and that i think has never been taste you know tested more than in last two years i think for years to come this 2020 and 2021 is going to be presented as use case across b schools across you know uh, strategy you know uh, i mean board rooms across meetings for generations to come right uh, we have had pandemic situations in uh, you know maybe uh, 100 200 years back and all but what it has shown today i think it was un- unseen and never thought of upon right and we are still not done with that gentlemen i think we all know it right we're still not done so so the role of a chief or of a digital leader has become paramount uh when we uh, earlier when we used to talk about digital the only thing that used to come in our mind was tech was okay somebody who understand technology it has gone beyond just the technology uh, forum but with technology at the core now a digital leader can be a business uh, somebody who has who is driving a business strategy with technology as a, as a core a digital leader can be somebody who is driving a technology strategy with obvious technology as a core right so it is now uh, omnipresent the relevance has become more wider right and so is the effect today so i think that's how i would define a digital leader today right i think the purview has become way way wider than what it was earlier uh, and it's only going to get wider that's it would i have a question for you yeah. it's 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 kind of soup it's it's you got the the chief digital officer and then you might have the the cto under under, under. that but also the chief marketing officer yes absolutely up under there absolutely absolutely that's the amalgamation of business and technology coming under chief digital officer that's what precisely i touched upon right now digital is no more just technology it touches Uh, tech, you know, it touches business as much as touches technology. So, as Paul rightly, you know, uh, uh, pointed, uh, you are. We are now seeing a structural change in organizations where a chief digital, uh, you know, a CIO or a CTO, and a CMO rolls up to a chief digital officer, and that's like a yeah. business a strategist sitting as a chief digital officer, vis-a-vis earlier only a technologist sitting. So it has come. That's correct. or the marketing person or they're yeah, sitting by, side by side and they're operating the two different the two different areas now absolutely. you got the the digital guy up above absolutely. that's making sure that's a consistent message going up to the executive absolutely board. yeah i totally agree i mean it has gone through a complete reengineering in terms of even organization structure uh, right from from an upward yeah, yeah. that's how it is for cool. us Good discussion. Let's uh, move over to Kishore. Kishore, why should a company prioritize digital transformation? So maybe uh, to benefit Dev uh, to tap <laughs> onto this, you know. <laughs> so maybe you no, know, we can take a lead on uh, this question, and then we'll okay, follow. go go ahead. Dave. Whatever is, we'll follow whatever is left over. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, it's everything's just disjointed. <laughs> you know the digital officer makes sure there's a consistent message in the whole company is 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 you know he's spearheading the direction of very similar to what a president would or a CEO would by helping him do that 
You know, the CEO knows the industry real well, but the chief digital officer knows the industry real well. Right. right. Yeah, I think true. I think, you know, I think Paul just uh, hit the nail, right? I think, uh, uh, it, you know, the digitization thing uh, is is no more, if you see, uh, gentlemen, it's no more an option, right? It's a mandate now. For you to, irrespective of what side of business you are running, irrespective of which side of the table you are in, whether you are uh, the consumer uh, organization or you are the service provider organization, I think digitization is now the core of it. And that's the beauty of it. If you look at it, right, it is not only like, okay, I'm a service provider and you are you are the consumer. So I am going to handhold you in, in your digitization process or in your digitization transformation that's there. But how much digitize, digitize, you know, I mean, digitally uh, potent am I? You know, how, how much did I transform internally, right, uh, to be able to uh, stake that claim, right? So I think it's it's very, uh, it's kind of, it's like both sides of the coin, right? So so it's very important that, uh, to your question, Jason, you know, as to why some, you know, if I understand your question properly, why the enterprise, anybody has to go digital, right? What is the reason for them to go digital? Yeah. I, the If I have to simplistically put it in, the, the reason you need to go digital is to ensure that you survive for a longer period today. Mm -hmm. Let's be very, very simple, right? If you want to survive, uh, if you have to survive, if you have to sustain and scale, right? So the, the mm -hmm. thing today is very clear, right? Survive, sustain and scale. Mm -hmm. And all three stitch together, nothing comes silo. So for you to do all of it, that stitching thread is digitization. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have that, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 please go ahead. So, so, you know, if you don't have that digital transformation guy internally, you know, that's why people like uh, Proanix, uh, you know, that's what they're doing is they're, pro they're not providing only the, the chief technology stuff, but they're providing the chief digital stuff also, yes. which is so important. Yeah. yeah so uh, let me add just growth uh, and sustainability. Yeah. I mean, absolutely, Paul. So, I mean, companies, uh, there are, you know, various production service companies that offer digital services like us. And we help clients in terms of identifying and prioritizing, you know, company wants to do digitalize, but, uh, but they don't know how to do it. So that's where we mm -hmm. step in and uh, do the, you know, landscape uh, assessment. Uh, we look at the current state and we look at the future state, what the to be state, and then uh, fill the gaps in between. And then kind of, you know, uh, create a business case as to, you know, what are the benefits, uh, you know, the digital transformation brings in. I mean, that's the original question. Uh, Jason was asking about why should you know company prioritize so that's basically the business case he's talking about so why should I do the you know a digital way just because others are doing it so what is the benefit for me uh, you know uh, so it, it kind of improves the overall uh, you know business process and and there are a lot of benefits right there are tons of them so you have it's basically provides a data driven customer insights so you exactly pinpoint the customer journey at what stage and you know when they bought the products, you know, when they dropped it, uh, when it came for, uh, you know, uh, returns. So the entire supply chain, and you can also see the improved uh, operational efficiency. So not only on the customer front, but also on the, the supply chain and the logistics and uh, it applies to any industry. Right? So any industry has supply chain, uh, whether you take healthcare or finance or uh, transportation or logistics or hospitality. So, and then it encourages the, you know, digital culture within the company. I mean, uh, we have seen a lot of, within the clients itself, not only IT guys and the digital CIOs and CTOs, but also the business driving the, the decisions about, hey, let's, let's convert this business process into digital because we have a lot of competition. Most of our competitors are actually doing it or let's be the first one to do it. Okay, let's try it out. And then here are the, you know, 10 advantages or the benefits that we see that's going to happen and will revolutionize uh, the way we op you know, provide our products or services mm -hmm. or solutions. And then it, it increases a lot of flexibility and scalability. So, so if you have to wrap up, what I mean to say is, so it, it offers numerous benefits, but to create a, a successful business model, so company have, companies have to really move away from traditional ways. I mean, I, I touched upon this, you know, traditional way of uh, doing the businesses and they have to embrace new technologies, new practices, which means the business processes to achieve their goals. 
-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. most most every business has has embraced digital to some extent or another. The the question then becomes how to, how do businesses move from okay I have stuff in the cloud and workflow in the cloud and so on. How do they move that from digital to an actual digital transformation of workflow? Um, let's start with start with Paul. How do, how do they show their leadership there? Maybe it's behind closed doors. Uh, you know, it go. You know, someone's going to ask you. You know, how you do something. And you know, and you can tell them once or twice, and you know, you have to tell them three times. It does. It doesn't work on a procedure. Uh, whereas if they go, hey, you know, go to our book and go to this chapter and, and you'll find out how to do it. Uh, uh, but a lot of times, you know, it's uh, the technicians are, you know, always in front of the computer and opening, closing tickets and stuff. So you can get KPIs. So I, I, I think that the thing is, is, is most, as you alluded to, Jason, most companies are doing some sort of digital stuff, but they're not, they're not going all the way, nor can you be 100% necessarily. You know, you're going to get close. You're going to keep on pushing that envelope. And a lot of times is, you know, the industries have have tools that are marketed specifically, specifically to those industries to get them real digital. You know, you got ERP systems, CRM systems and stuff like that, that you can keep a lot of this stuff in there. And all these people have their own lanes, their own industries that they go down to. So, you know, it's uh, they all follow the same process, the same methodology to put it all together. And then, you know, you get someone like uh, a few shorter to, you know, uh, help, help take it from, you know, maybe they're only 70%, but, you know, it doesn't take much more. You know, you look at a professional baseball player, U.S. baseball player, you know, the RBIs, you know, the difference from uh, th that best guy, the Babe Ruth guy versus the guy that's sitting on the bench might be one or two points. It doesn't take much more. If you play golf, you know, you, you, you reduce the swings. It doesn't take much to increase with your digital processes to get so much more benefit. It, it's, 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 a, it's a hockey stick, hockey right. stick type of, of progression and growth. Then we're talking about connecting the dots to give them more efficiency and, and greater flexibility and so on. Yeah. Going uh, and, and, and understanding the business and seeing where they're missing, uh, I'm missing a little bit and, 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 you know, and, and just filling in that gap. Yeah. Deeb, Kishore, what do you have to add to this, this uh, question, this, this topic here? So how, okay, so how does the, you know, business uh, move to digital? I mean, there are a lot of ways. So the number one is basically the scalability aspect, right? Because whenever we move to digital, you need to really scale up the system, you know, uh, up and down. So obviously cloud environment is one of the solution as well. And, uh, and also, uh, you know, being able to offer, uh, you know, your business services in different platforms. So, for example, the mobility, you know, that, that's another solution. So, and also moving away from the traditional applications to more of a SaaS-based applications, right? So, whatever the business process we have. So, let them be, you know, migrated to more of a uh, microservices-based, you know, wherein we have uh, independent services, that are being operated. So each service, you can take it as a business service. So you can scale up and down based on the customer uh, inflow or the partner's inflow or the, the internal uh, you know, business activities. So you can really scale up and down easily with the cloud and with the service oriented architecture, like you know, building everything as a service and being able to integrate with other partners as an APIs and, uh, and being able to you know, convert everything into more of a mobility-based uh, you know, it could be, you know, mobile apps, or maybe it could be uh, the IoT devices, if you're a manufacturing firm or a, in a physical asset based firm. Uh, so that would be another, uh, you know, a solution. So likewise, and also automate the entire, uh, you know, business process uh, through the, you know, RPA, you have robotic process automation, you can write bots, and you can automate your customer service into chatbots with the, with the comprehensive chatbots, lightweight chatbots, depends on the use cases. So there are a lot of ways, you know, you have to take each of the uh, business functionality or the business unit per se uh, within the industry. And then you have to take each part and then apply respect to converting those into digital processes and apply technologies that would automate the entire business process so that 
the man manual intervention is less and you have complete uh, KPIs and metrics available. So you can kind of uh, keep on improving the process on a daily basis because you have the real time metrics available. So, and you can really automate that, uh, you know, uh, avoiding duplication and uh, improving the efficiencies. So you have a lot of automated tools available nowadays to detect a friend as to, oh, this process is actually uh, not really, you know, getting scaled up. So this process is actually getting uh, less, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, intense. So then what should we do? So take a mix of human actions, human tasks, as well as automated tasks. So that would also improve. So, that, so likewise, we have to assess each of the business function and then trying to map that to the, you know, a digital solution and see which technology or which business process can be more efficient. And, and we have to move forward in creating that future state, you know, digital architecture, digital roadmap and digital solutions, and then move forward. So it's kind of a, you know, multi-year roadmap, but we have to get the quick wins. Normally the way we do it is when we do the roadmaps, we always, you know, see the quick wins in the first, second quarter, third quarters in the first year, and then try to implement those in a rapid manner uh, and then put them in the cloud so that you can be able to really, you know, optimize and, uh, you know, uh, be flexible with the, uh, with the services and then take the, you know, the second priority and third priority. So you have to like kind of prioritize uh, and then see what is the value addition for the business as well. I think from week to week, a lot of times management will get their reports and they'll be able to see, okay, what's in, you know, what's doing better and what's not doing better. And then that's where you spend your time. And so you yes. go week by week, month by month, and 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 so you're always on a on a uphill scale, uphill. Uh, uh, you're always getting things improved, improved, and you're identifying things aren't working early on in the process, the agile process. Well, we all know that that through the through the pandemic, the adoption of digital uh, has kind of gone through the roof. Um, what what are you guys seeing as how the priorities of companies have shifted uh, throughout this and the, the leadership that some companies have shown uh, in the adoption of newer technologies. Um, okay, I think uh, I'll take that. Uh, so uh, just how, what we have seen is that, uh, you know, um, as I was saying during my introduction, right? so we are at the thick of the things because uh, you know, we kind of uh, turned out to be that custodian of data for uh, the organizations, a data center and cloud player ourselves. So, uh, so we, we we actually have the best seat in the gallery to see you know how this whole transformation is happening, right? right. Uh, I, do, I mean, real question, right? It's a very very potent question. Uh, uh, we have seen uh, the the priorities changing from a business uh, from running of a business you know, uh, sustaining the business and streamlining it, right? That has, because people got, a, you know, a jolt out of the blue when they're not prepared for what's coming their way, when, they, when everything suddenly came crashing and stopped, you know, with a knee-jerk stoppage, everything stopped, right? The right. Best of business houses, the best of leaders and never have factored that as a part of their, uh, their, their whole storyboard, right? So it kind of had a knee-jerk, I think. Uh, so what we have seen is the digital transformation, how it has worked is the first priority has been the core, you know, the core uh, applications, the core things which moved from in-house to a cloud, which is a, a multi-axis, multi-local, right? Uh, you know, zero dependency on geography sort of a, uh, an environment, right? Now what we have seen is once that is done and that gets stabilized, the next in priority is are the uh, are the environments which are the support factors, the support environments, right? Now there is a uh, what's which I found found uh, and I, I also say it's the beauty of digitization. The digitization is is no more flushing everything into the cloud. It's about creating that optimum model and creating a hybrid structure. Right. right. Just not everything can and should go on cloud, right? Cloud, I know earlier when you used to say, okay, digitization, okay, put everything on cloud, right? That was like an overemphasized thing without thinking the consequences of it. 
as a data center and cloud organization, we are serving, we are solutionizing, uh, you know, multiple such stories where we are creating a, a multi-thread solution where certain, certain core is sitting, uh, you know, in an on-premise environment. Part of the core is going on cloud. A part of, of the system is going third party, but sitting in a data center space under a co-location or a managed co-location uh, co in, in infrastructure. So if you look at it, it's already hyper-thread now. So it's hyper-thread. And then now, now uh, somebody can ask, okay, now that is like, it was one, it was in one place, now it is in three places, in three locations or three, uh, you know, threads. Did, you know, didn't it become more complex? No. The beauty is how you, how you give everything put together and give that single pane of glass is the beauty of digitization. As you, me or Kishore or Paul or anybody who has joined, I should not even bother where my data is. It is served on my screen seamlessly with zero or minimal lag and latency, right? right? That is the beauty of digitization, which is not in front of the screen, but behind the screen, which is tying that multi-thread together. And that what we have been doing. And that's why I thought, you know, I'll pick that question because, you know, uh, we, are, we are in that thick of things of how are we threading that together? I mean, tying those multi-thread together, right? And, uh, to do that, there are three things which come into play. One, uh, process optimization, right, where we work very closely with the customers in optimizing the process. B, the delivery optimization. In terms of how are we going to, okay, we have optimized the process. Now that has to be taken to a platform, which can be in-house or cloud or data center. And it has to be delivered. How seamless it can be delivered without compromising the security, the availability, right? Uh, zero trust security coming on top of it, right? And then the continuous sustainability of that QS, of, of that you know QS, the quality service. So all these three are the key aspects how you tie them together, and that's I think um, has been the uh, the essence of how this digitization has has worked. Right? It is no more as unithread; it's become multi-thread, but tied together. I think that's what has really worked for. I mean, I, I'm seeing that happening. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, Paul uh, Kishore, what, what do you have to add to this? So uh, before the pandemic, I mean, uh, the priorities of any company that we have seen, you know, working with you know, a lot of companies. So it's basically, you know, establishing a consistent customer service, you know, for the full customer journey and performance management and, uh, you know, enhancing the, you know, digital marketing strategy and, you know, aligning the resources for the future business. So it's kind of a traditional way of doing it, right? Uh, I mean, before the pandemic. So that's working well. I mean, that was working well. But with the pandemic, it was a sudden shift, as uh, you know, uh, he said. So the main top five priorities that we have seen is basically they are actually aligning resources, I mean, resource requirements with the future business objectives. So they're, you know, thinking ahead of time because not thinking about the current practices because they want to really digitalize all of those you know business practices so they're looking at they're aligning all the resource requirements for the you know future business objectives so that's number one priority and they're kind of embedding people plan i mean the the people that are required uh, to do the you know or to run the operations they are actually embedding that people plan with the corporate strategy so the entire uh, it strategy if you will it's part of the corporate strategy, the business strategy. So they're embedding people plan. So what, who should we hire to, to be able to sustain and grow and innovate and, uh, you know, to be a digital oriented business, right? So that's another uh, number two priority to keep uh, people are thinking a lot and implementing as well last two years we have seen. And also they're looking at number three as a rapid, you know, product or, uh, you know, service innovation. So they want really kind of, you know, we have, a lot of options to you know bring on SaaS products or build something very quickly. Uh, you don't need to write the code from scratch. So there are a lot of you know tools available that kind of you know design the business process and then automatically you know or generate the uh, the APIs or the SaaS products and then just host on the cloud automatically. They offer the cloud themselves. For example, you have the Salesforce Health Cloud, so which was widely used in the uh, the pandemic uh, situations, right? So the Health Cloud is very fast. You know, it's an innovative approach. 
You just need to design your business practice, I mean, the business process, and then boom. So you don't need to write a single line of code. You just need to you know, attach your respect to operational data stores, and then you're able to have the product ready and available in the you know, cloud, either AWS or uh, you know, Salesforce cloud or source, just an example. So it's basically rapid uh, you know, product innovation or a service innovation. So without kind of thinking you know, long-term. So, and then as I think both of them said, so data analytics, so it's a complete real-time analytics to steer my processes and to readjust uh, uh, to, to the, you know, the customer uh, you know, journey as well as the internal performance management. So, so the real-time adjustment of the data metrics uh, that's also another priority that people are really looking at. So that's where the data science is coming up. Uh, the machine learning, a lot of companies are, you know, uh, doing, you know, big bang projects on data lake. So bringing all of the data from the digital footprint, from all of the digital processes uh, throughout the supply chain, and then being able to, uh, you know, analyze those and be able to, uh, so that's also number, uh, number four priority or five. Uh, yeah, so, and also a lot of companies, are bringing in alliances, you know, the partner alliances like us to deliver and scale uh, the you know, overall revenues and profitability because the, the quicker they build the digital uh, processes and be able to enable the business, uh, the more revenues and profits they can be able to get. For example, all these, uh, the testing companies, right? The COVID test companies, they're small companies that became uh, like within six months or one year, they, they became like competing with the big uh, testing companies. Like for example, in US we have LabCorp and Quest Direct, Quest Direct. So we know only those two companies in US, but there are other companies that came up equivalent to these two animals, the big animals. And then they, they are really competing uh, because these two are legacy companies, right? I mean, they have the digital footprint, but, but not at the scale of, the fresh start of uh, you know their whole business is digital the other competitors so they're able to thrive and these guys are kind of, kind of following it so similar to that a lot of other businesses e-commerce we have seen so the priorities are you know shifted a lot uh, i mean as i said uh, some of these activities yeah going to what, what Kilshaw was, was saying is that you know before covid only the big mass large companies had a good idea on tra digital transformation but though you got those companies are doing less than 100 million dollars a year and you know before you know before covid digital transformation was really informal and disjointed and the thing is is covid has forced everybody to go with digital transformation because you know you can't see the people uh, you can only measure what they're doing by what they're doing, uh, you know, how long they're spending on the computer, what they're doing, they're, they're, you know, what they're actually pumping out as being an employee. You know, you, you can't look over the shoulder anymore. You got it. That all, all that stuff is measured digitally. And so, right. you know, and for those businesses that did not adopt any type of digital transformation or slight amount of digital transformation during COVID are not here today. Yeah. Yeah. I think sure. you know, the one that Paul was mentioning, just one quick thing, even, even those those big fishes or the, the biggies, right, who thought that they have they have gone through the entire journey of digital th transformation, but actually caught surprise that they really have not. Yeah, they're, but they were able to tweak really, they really able fast. To tweak it, right? Look at uh, but, Zoom, look uh, at but, Dell, look at all those yeah, guys. Yeah, they yeah, tweaked yeah. really, really fast. They but really they fast, got the resources yeah. to do it. Go fudge. So, no one probably knew what to call the chief. The, yeah, the, the, yeah, absolutely. The chief digital absolutely. guy. Go, oh, fudge. I know I know technology. I know marketing. I know business. Here, let me do it. Okay. <laughs> I think that's, that's all right. It, it, actually, it actually got, uh, you know, more than what they thought is the best, you know, in this last two years, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, now, before we, we're starting to run low on time, so we're going, I'm going to ask you one more question for the three of you in just a moment. But for the folks that are listening, we are going to take some questions. If you would pop your questions into the chat, um, we'll, we'll have uh, five minutes or so of, of uh, answering your questions uh, after this next question that I'm about to pose to these three. So I guess my next question, gentlemen, is with the introduction of more digital technologies also comes uh, more risk that has to be mitigated. And so let's start with Paul and, and uh, Paul, if you talk to us for a moment about 
within an organization, how do you lead that organization so that so that they the fear of the fear of that risk is mitigated um, so that they're willing to uh, introduce more more digital products into their into their processes. Yeah, a lot of times, you know, you bring in something new and you, you're the champion of it, you know, bring it into your organization and you never want to be on the bleeding edge. And so what you want to do is you need to study your industry, study people uh, like, like uh, Proonix and, and, and stuff like that. Make sure that you're selecting a good partner. Don't go by, don't go do it by yourself. Do it with someone that's done it before uh, in many different industries and even in your industry. That's really the best way to mitigate your risk. Get a partner, get an outside partner to help you. Yeah, awesome. So then within that, within that organizational structure then, by bringing in a partner like Pronix, you can, you can help mitigate that risk and help those within the C-suite with you to understand that this is not as scary as what they think it's going to be. Yeah, um, you know, you, get, you find someone that has use cases and stuff like that. And so, you know, and it, it's, a, it's a very vital part of your organization. And yeah. don't take it lightly, you know, yeah. make sure they know what they're doing. Yeah, uh, let's, let's move to uh, Keyshore. If you would please talk to us a little bit about securing the digital transformation. Uh, I mean, obviously with the pandemic, we have seen uh, uh, the cybersecurity is at you know, uh, forefront for a lot of companies. And uh, I mean, security is also a big aspect because you're putting everything on the digital. So, you, so the companies are really implementing cybersecurity uh, you know, uh, securing all of their assets, digital assets, you know, including the physical hardware, software, and, uh, you know, the applications running in the cloud. And with respect to, you know, healthcare, we have HIPAA regulations and finance, you know, uh, you know, they have uh, banking regulations, you know, financial regulations. So obviously we have to adhere to all these as a, you know, compliances per se, but instead of, I mean, along with those, so the another thing is basically the cybersecurity because you're exposing everything to the outside world, both your, uh, you know, all of your digital apps and uh, data and uh, all of your devices as well, right? Per se. Uh, so uh, you have the handheld devices being used. So uh, you have to protect all these assets, you know. Uh, otherwise, you know, they, it will, you know, uh, put your company into further risk. So, and you also have to be, you know. Uh, anti-threat enable. So we have to implement all those, you know, threat management practices, right? And you also have to do a lot of penetration testing, vulnerability testing. So we do all that uh, with all of our customers before we, you know, uh, enable all of their applications. I mean, digital enable all of their applications. So you have to do the, you know, comprehensive uh, asset inventory, you know, what are all the digital assets, known and unknown assets. And uh, you also have to shadow your IT and, uh, you know, uh, leak cre credential uh, detection. Uh, so, and then we have to do the effective uh, risk prioritization. So, you have to you know come up with various risks, and then uh, and then plan accordingly. Uh, and also your uh, overall uh, you know data center security as well, right? The physical security of it. And then uh, the threat intelligence. So, you have to we have a lot of tools available that provides you know real time uh, you know in advance uh, proactive. Uh, threat intelligence so you can be able to kind of uh, you know uh, resolve some of those aspects uh, so we have a lot of external you know attack surface management products right so the gartner had come up with you know identified you know emerging products so we have to kind of assess those products and see what is the fit uh, for our business needs and you also have to take multi-layered you know uh, risk reduction program especially on the you know vulnerability management side so so it, it's kind of you know you have to identify the hacker uh, in advance so that, uh, so it won't, you know, uh, it won't really obstruct your pathways, uh, you know, for teaming up with, you know, exercises. Deep, uh, what, what are we looking at with, uh, securing digital transformation? Uh, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, I think Paul spoke about, <clears throat> you know, about, uh, getting in the experts and I think that's, uh, you know, that's what our mantra is when we, you know, our core mantra when you speak, we say, you know, uh, uh, let us do uh, what we are best at. 
to let you right. do your best at it, right? Uh, don't take chances. I think chances are the last thing that you want to uh, take, right? When you're talking about your data, right? Well, today we know data is, uh, is, is, is oil, right? It's the new oil now, right? So, um, so as a data center player, I think uh, data center and cloud provider, right? I think uh, uh, that's what we put at, at top of our, our uh, priority list, right? Uh, starting from, from securing, um, and, uh, and, and what we do is what goes as an assurance to our client is securing uh, the data right at the perimeter uh, level till the last mile, uh, you know, um, uh, last mile storage when the data gets stored and then how it moves out. So, which is, you know, the encrypted data that, that moves out also. Uh, so there are multi-level checks, there are multi-level, you know, automation checks that are being there. They, you know, like these that, uh, uh, like Kishore spoke about, you know, whether it is intrusion detection, the enterprise grade, you know, firewall ecosystem coming in, zero trust, you know, security mechanism, uh, you know, then, then identity access management, uh, you know, and, and so on and so forth, right? Uh, so today, if you look at it, there are at any given point in time, like for example, for our cloud and data center fabric, right? We have uh, typically eight to nine checks, you know, check gates, which are there, right? Because Today, the security is not, not just, just uh, cyber security. If you look at it, there are three aspects of it. One is, uh, you know, uh, infra security. Then yeah, you it's... infosec, infrasec, infosec, and then comes cybersec, right? That's right. So cybersec is when it actually goes out, right? You talk about securing your infra first, your core infra. Then you secure the data that slides on it. And then you secure the, the data that flows out and in, which is the cyber security. So which means that you have to have the mechanism in place to secure all these aspects, right? And then it goes to the client, not only as a secure data, but as an assurance that you are in safe hands, right? And that encourages others to follow the uh, steps, right? And that's how it kind of uh, uh, moves on. And we, we as, an, as a cloud player, cloud as a data center provider, and we take it as a paramount uh, responsibility for ourselves as well. And that's not a deliverable, yeah. All right, perfect. I don't see any particular questions from uh, from the audience today. So let's uh, just go around and any final thoughts, please, gentlemen. I think, uh, you know, I'll take a jab because I was I had the late movers advantage when I came in. So maybe I'll take, a, take the first step. So I think, I think uh, you know, digital uh, leadership, you know, uh, the, the theme of this talk that we have today, I think it's paramount uh, at this point, you know, because, uh, Unless you are thinking ahead of the curve, right, uh, you will end up risking uh, your uh, your sustainability, your growth, and your scale. Right? So it's very important that you think today uh, for day after tomorrow, right, and plan it very seamlessly, right. When you do it ahead of the curve, I think you are you are covered pretty much. And then you have you know specialists like you know like Ponex is there. And, you know we come in as our service provider, we, we uh, specialists in cloud and data center you know space. Uh, you know, we come and we give you that that extra, uh, you know, uh, extra coverage around you, so that you know, your business runs in its full flare, right? So I think uh, it's the role of digital uh, leader is only going to get important from here on. Furthermore, yeah. Uh, Paul, final thoughts? Uh, final thoughts. I'm going to just go ahead and post up uh, in the chat real quick how to get a hold of me, and we have a free business evaluator online that you can go and find out how much your business is worth uh, next to your peer groups, lower peer groups and higher peer groups. And, and it'll also help you identify what, you need, what you're doing well within your peer group and what you need to work on to excel your growth and everything else. And digital transformation is a pivotal part of that because if you don't secure what you have digitally, you won't have a business tomorrow. Perfect, yes, drop that into the chat for, for folks to, uh, to be able to, get over there and see that. Um, Kishore, final thoughts. Yeah, so as a uh, services company, solutions and services company, we uh, mainly partner with the business leaders, both IT and business leaders, you know, analyze their existing capabilities, identify their focus areas, mapping to the, you know, the business IT strategy. And then we do the complete digital assessments and strategy and then bring in respective people, processes, and technology, right? PPT, we call it as, it's a framework where we use uh, people process technology framework. And then we enhance the, you know, the 
existing technology landscape to fit into the you know the digital strategy and roadmap uh, and then we execute the overall uh, the plan and then kind of you know take the initiatives and then, uh, you know expand the portfolio and help the clients with innovation so i think as uh, you know, rob said so the clients are nowadays involved in the subject matter experts they're not taking chances so they're kind of uh, calling in niche uh, you know uh, service providers like us uh, and then trying to tap into the initiatives and engaging and partnering. So that's, yeah, definitely uh, to be a digital leader, not doing it everything yourself, like a do it yourself project. So it's kind of, uh, you know, do it for us project, wherein the leader has to identify, you know, who are all the key players that are required, both internally and externally, and bring the partnership on and then, uh, you know, create as a one digital team and then execute the overall process combining the the business players the it players and the external uh, service providers or partners so i think that's what i would say as a closing statement perfect um we do have uh, one question that has come in that we'll address before we go and paul uh drop that link uh for your for your, uh, oh, we got a couple of questions now. All right, here we go. Uh, the first question, will technology shortages uh, are still challenges for leaders or are they looking for alternate solutions and tools that are available in the market? So are the technology shortages causing problems and are alternate solutions available? I don't think yeah, technology uh, shortages uh, are, are are, are, are an issue. I think the businesses, the technology businesses and personics that have survived the, the, the COVID and everything else, they got their stuff straight and, you know, they have the resources and they're very scalable with the, with the technology that they have, that they put in place. They practice what they preach. Right. Uh, another question we have uh, is what are further digitization related challenges? I, I think, uh, you know, uh, I think it's uh, one uh, challenge which has always uh, stayed with digitization is how effectively uh, you, your think tank is able to uh, bring, a, you know, a, a, you know a, a symmetry between what has to be digitized and then the process is implemented. I think the implementation of right digitization strategy is the biggest challenge. After that, it's a smooth walk, right? So I think that continues to be there. Uh, the character of it or the, or the color of it might change, but I think that I feel uh, would still remain uh, very critical in terms of having the right digitization strategy. I think that's very important. Yeah, finding it, finding uh, it, because a lot of people don't know they don't have it, and a gap analysis will go a very long way with you trying to identify it. And the experience goes even further. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that uh, concludes our time today, gentlemen. Thank you so much. And to our audience, uh, thank you for joining us and be well. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for thank having you. us. Yeah, thank you for us. having us. Right. Take, Take care. care.